Okay. Are you able to see my screen? Is everybody able to see my screen? I'm on muted. Yes. 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 We are starting our, our presentation. I remember somebody has already muted me, but of course, I, now I think I, I'm unmuted. So as I said, today we are going to do go, go through a journey through the mind of an examiner, right from the UPA Command Center. We are looking at the chemistry KCC preparations using the concept mapping and the octopus technique. I'll be able to navigate or rather to show you the different techniques that you may need to revive, to, to prepare for your KCSE. Uh, then we'll be able to continue to go from there. Maybe we can have another session depending on what uh, your expectations are. So as I said, uh, we are the UPA, the UPA Command Center whereby we try to unpack uh, and mask illuminate and demystify chemistry in a very uh, pragmatic manner coupled with paragonism and magnetism. So we are going to do it uh, in a very, very uh, unique way, the way we are going to do these kind of uh, sessions. And I'm doing it with the best way possible. I know we are having uh, teachers there, we are having students from different parts of the country, from different schools. All of you, you are our sons and daughters, you are our sons and daughters, so welcome to this. And I believe this uh, session will be very, very useful uh, to you. So any any condition that you have, I'm going to be able to disseminate uh, wisdom dropwise until in excess, uh, until any condition or rather any clarification you need, we'll have to dissolve to form a colorless solution. So uh, get ready to navigate through the deep waters of chemistry. So we are moving, we need to go next. So uh, whatever you are waiting for an examination, whatever you are waiting for an examination, you focus on three main areas, and that is what is tested, how it is tested, and what are the expectations of the examiner. So as you're preparing for that chemistry exam, you must be able to know like what is going to be tested and how it's going to be tested and what are the expectations of the examiner. So that if you're preparing for uh, paper one, you know what you're preparing for. When you're preparing for paper two, you know what is what you're preparing for. So that is very much important for you uh, to be able to understand that. So let's uh, navigate. We are looking at the, the chemistry exam projections, the exam setting. You have to, we are talking about now, you need to know what is tested, how it is tested, and what are the expectations of the examiner. So the chemistry exam will comprise of three papers as shown. So let's navigate, like how is it tested? Of course, there are three papers. So what is the content of that exam? What is the content of that? So we find that uh, we are going to have, we have the paper one. The paper one, it contains about 20, it usually used to contain 28 to 32 questions, but normally nowadays, paper, uh, paper one is going to be containing 27 questions. So likely all the paper one that you're going to be getting, even the paper one for this year, likely will have 27 questions. And uh, it contains a uh, short answer question, which ranges between one mark or to four marks. And it is set from the entire syllabus. That is all the 24 topics, all the 24 topics in chemistry are tested in paper one. It is very much important for you to be able to understand. So when you're revising for paper one, it is all the topic right from the introduction to chemistry. We go to classification all the way to radioactivity. So when you're preparing for one, it requires you to have the entire content in your figurative, in your figurative is not in your notes. So we are saying the content, the entire chemistry content must be in your figurative, in your figurative is not in your notes. So the entire content from introduction all the way to radioactivity, you need to synchronize all those content. Uh, to be able to get a good mark in paper one. Let's look at paper two. Let's look at paper two. 
So paper two normally are six to seven questions. And each question in paper two carries between nine to 16 marks. Normally, uh, except uh, maybe in, in about uh, one or two scenarios, paper two questions are normally seven. But there are some scenarios whereby it is said containing six questions and not seven. So where is the paper two set from? Paper two, unlike paper one, it is set from uh, uh, particular topics. It is normally set from uh, particular topics. So it is not like paper one. So you can easily know how to prepare for paper two. And how do you prepare for that paper two? The first one is periodic table. In other one, we normally call it the periodicity. Normally called the periodicity because it encros rather it is synchronizes. The examiner will synchronize knowledge on atomic structure, chemical formula, and equations. That's the, the first topic is atomic structure in paper two. It is not going to talk about to test on chemical families, structured bonding, and the trends. So it is synchronizes all those concepts. Those are like four topics in one. Although nowadays they dissolved the, 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 the trails across period three and they synchronize, they just put in as part of chemical families, as part of structure and boarding. But of course, that's a, a different concept altogether. So the question on periodic table will have periodicity. It will be one question, about 12 marks, but we'll have a concept on atomic structure and periodic table. We'll have a concept on chemical families. We'll have a concept on structure and boarding. We'll have a, a concept on something like the trend. And also maybe we talk about the, the chemical properties of those elements. That is also tested under chemical properties. It is very much important for you to be able to understand that. But let me remind you this. Eh? The periodic table is, uh, is almost a must that you're going to find it in paper two. But remember, the same will also feature in paper one. So when you prepare for periodicity properly, you already have about 20 to 25 marks because there are four topics synchronized in one. So in paper one, each of these topics will be treated uh, separately, rather independently. And we're likely to going to get about 10 to 12 marks in paper one. Then about 12 marks in paper two. That means around 24. So that this is a, a basic concept. This is a very important topic for you to be able to understand. And remember that the chemistry, the foundation of chemistry is in form two. Any poor conductor of chemistry, any poor conductor of chemistry lost it in form one. Just pick any form three, any form four who is not understanding any chemistry or rather who lost it in chemistry. And they're going to tell you they lost it in, a, in, in writing chemical formula and chemical equation. So it is very much important for you to be able to get that. Organic chemistry, again, is another important area and is a must. And this topic is a stronghold. It is a stronghold of chemistry. Why? Because you expect almost 30 marks there. We have organic one and two. That is going to give you six marks in paper one. Remember in paper one, although we have organic one and organic two, each one is treated differently. So we are going to have a question on organic one, another one in organic two. So then we go to paper two, we are going to find a one question in organic. Then we go to paper three again, and we're going to find question three or question two. These are questions for organic. That tells us organic will be giving us between 26 to 30 marks in KCSE a very important topic to deal with. Physical chemistry. Physical chemistry is in, in, in encompasses those topics of rate, radioactivity, electrochemistry, and energy changes. Here, these are four topics. And usually we're going to have two to three questions from these topics. These are four topics, and we're having two to three questions in paper two. Last year, we had a funny scenario by one question electrochemistry. One topic was tested twice. We had two questions from the same topic, and then the other one from red. So these are very important areas. Again, remember, these are four topics. Whoever is doing this uh, labeling here is, is not a very normal person. So let me 
do the control. So I've, I've disabled the annotations so that uh, people do not uh, do not waste our time. Are we? Are you? Are you following? Oh, I, I'm lost. Are we okay? Are you, are you following? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we are together. Together. Yeah, we are together. 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 We are now. We I was saying we are physical chemistry. And this physical chemistry, we have four topics. Remember, mole is still here, but mole is not tested in paper, in paper two. It's just synchronized. We may have a question on, 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 on chlorine. This is a question on mole there. We have a periodic table, this is calculation there. But now we have a rate, radioactivity, electrochem, energy changes. We are going to have two to three questions in paper two. I remember I'm talking about. These are four topics. They are going to have questions in paper one. So assume each topic, which has to be there, that each topic will be tested in paper one. Give it three marks. That's already 12 marks. Then we have two to three questions there. That already tells you that component, that area whereby we only have four topics. Automatically, you are talking about between around um, 12, then we can have about uh, 35 to 50 marks, 35 to 45 marks from these topics. I remember again, the house are going to feature again in practical. Like the rate and the energy are also tested in practical. So you find that these topics, this area is very important. And these topics are in which area? They are in form four. They're in form four. Very important for you to be able to understand. Uh, the, 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 the course, please just check if there's any message that is worthy my attention so that we, we, we continue. But we, I hope you are able to handle the, the teachers available. Be, make sure that we're able to handle any issues uh, that are being coming up from the students. Uh, then we have the industrial chemistry. Many students think industrial chemistry is simply uh, the survey process, host toward harbor process and conduct. No the chemistry of metals and nonmetals. The chemistry of metals and nonmetals, yeah, they should be and. The chemistry of metals and nonmetals, make sure that we're able to correct that. The chemistry of metals and nonmetals is what uh, brings about, rather is what uh, we talk about the, the what? The industrial chemistry. So the chemistry of carbon is industrial chem. The chemistry of chlorine, the chemistry of nitrogen, the chemistry of sulfur and extraction of metals Extraction of copper is an industrial process. Extraction of sodium is an industrial, because that's how we get sodium in large scale. That, that, there's no other thing that, uh, that, that, that is there. So it's, it's very much important for you uh, to be able to, to get that. Then we have salt and mist concepts. Salt and mist concepts, any mist concept, we love, we love, we have to invoke the knowledge of salt there. Any mist concept, we love to invoke the concept. Like, for example, you can have Iron reacting with sulfur to form iron 2 sulfide. Then the examiner draws another arrow. The iron 2 sulfide is now reacted with HCl. What do we get? We get iron 2 chloride and we also get hydrogen sulfide. Then the hydrogen sulfide now directed, you see it directed to acidified potassium manganese 7, whereby the acidified potassium manganese 7 changes from uh, uh, purple to colorless. You may also have now the iron 2 chloride. That is formed solution. Now we add chlorine or hydrogen peroxide or nitric five acid. That now we are not going to oxidize. And the green solution changes to yellow. 
which is iron three chloride. Then there are so many things that can come from that particular ant. It can even start from sodium plus water. You get sodium hydroxide. Then you add all those kind of things. So mixed concept is a question that is just based on reactions. And you cannot talk about reaction. Most of the reactions will lead to formation of a particular thought. So that's why I'm talking about thought and mixed concept. So from that kind of a scenario, you are looking at that student. I want somebody maybe to be able to answer that. So in paper two, the content mostly that is treated in paper two is from which class? From one, from two, from three, from four? It is from what class possibly? From four. From four. 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 No, I think I was muted, but now I think I'm okay. I was muted, but I think now I'm okay. So in that kind of a scenario, we, we are now... Uh, there is somebody who has said, is it true that the extraction of copper is never tested? Whoever gave you that kind of notion, that is wrong. Copper is part of the syllabus. It was just tested the other day. So don't ignore copper. In fact, the last time it is the one of the methods that was lastly tested. So even in fact, it has a high chance of being tested. So please don't ignore the extraction of copper. Now, uh, from there I'm saying, looking at this analysis, you can easily know that you can only get only two questions outside from FOAC. That is probably from the periodicity and one question from the non metal. No, no. When you talk about two questions that are tested from industrial chemistry, we are going to have one question from maybe non metal, nitrogen, carbon, then another one from metals. But because these are the same concept, that's why you find you have found it that many a times we have been having exams without what? Without metals. Because when we test a question on nitrogen, we have already tested that concept of industrial chemistry. That is very much important for you to be able to understand. But remember, a question can be synchronized. It doesn't mean that we cannot bring a question on, uh, on nitrogen. But it will be very almost impossible to find a question that is exclusively on something like separation of mixtures alone. But of course, it can still be tested. But Likely, this is whereby most of the questions we will be tested from paper two. And it enables you to know that you need to have from four content is kink when you're preparing for KCSE. From four content is kink. Okay, I'm coming to the methodology of, 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 of now preparation. Okay, uh, we have Joy Gadero. Any question, you can bring it up. Joy Gadero. Okay. okay. Now, um, let's go to paper two, and I think you are you are screenshotting that. So, question one. Question one for paper three will be from physical chemistry. And that physical chemistry topic for physical chemistry in paper three are titration. We have energy changes. We have rate, solubility, and cooling curve. In fact, I've given them. I've given it based on their, on their weight. Like always for the last 32 years, eh? From 1989, we have had titration tested for 27 times. Energy changes has also been tested for about 16 times. So rate has only been tested six times. Solubility has been tested two times. And the cooling curve has been tested twice. Uh, then we have uh, question two is always in organic qualitative analysis that you test for cations and anions. And then we have 
they I understand there is a there's a chat someone. Okay. Uh, yes, that I'm getting from. Okay. Among um, your graphs, I've seen somebody one day I'll be able to get to that and I'm I'm I'll be able to record on that. Uh, I, I'll coming to that. Graph of rate, I'll be able to answer those questions, maybe possibly on the graph work. Um, uh, but I can just tell you because they are there. For, for direct, just write it down. For those people who might be having issues, the issues of graphs are as follows. Graph of uh, volume against time is the curve. That graph was only tested once in 1992. So you are adding, for example, uh, you, you, you are adding now the magnesium to HCL and you're recording the time. So instead of that, you, you are using different volumes of HCL and different volumes of water. Maybe you can start with 10 cubic centimeters of HCL with no water added. Then you add a small piece of magnesium, you record the time taken. You continue, uh, you use eight cubic centimeters of, of what? Of, of HCL with adding two CMK of water. That one is dilute. You again add another piece of magnesium, record the time taken. So when now you are plotting, you plot the volume of HCL against time. That will be a curve. A normal curve, smooth curve. To give them a normal curve, smooth curve means you drawn freely with an ant, not a straight line. Then we have graph of rate. Rate means one over time. So all graphs of one over time against the volume or against concentration. Remember, volume and concentration are the same. That is a, a straight line passing through the origin and only two correct plots, just at least two correct plots. But to Ipitiata Gamma can attend plots, Ipitiata Kwambili then you extrapolate it padded to the origin. That is how you summarize graph of rate. Then we also have a graph of one over T against temperature. Now that one is a, a what? That one now is a curve and not a straight line. Graph of one over time against temperature is not a straight line. It is a smooth curve. There's a fallacious misnomer that is uh, propagated, you know, when you say something is a fallacy, it has been repeated so many times, I think people think it is the correct thing. There are people who depend on assumptions that whenever you see one over T, it must again as anything, it must be a straight line, that's, uh, that's wrong. Of course, that graph has never been tested, but if it's got to, if whatever it's got to be tested, a graph of one over time against temperature is not a straight line, it is a curve passing through the origin. And I think I'm clear because I, I had to answer that one because I've seen uh, many people are uh, asking about that. And I think we, we are good to go. We are good to go. Good. Now, the same scenario, uh, we are now going on to, uh, I, I was explaining that question two for paper three. Question two, paper three is inorganic qualitative analysis, whereby we are testing for cations and anions. And organic qualitative, organic qualitative, we test for functional, and this is where I want you to understand. In organic qualitative, we are testing for the functional groups. And that is why some people will, I'll be coming to that. I know um, many people, when they, they are told, when like when you are burning and it, somebody burns a yellow sooty flame, you say double bond, triple bond present. But when it burns a blue flame, you say what? Double bond, triple bond, absent. Many people have always been asking like, why is it that we don't say single bond present? But alkanes, do they even have a functional group? What's the functional group of alkanes? I'm muted. Do you have a functional group for alkanes? Yeah. They are, it doesn't have. So, and that's why we, we don't need test for to test for single. No. 
for single bond. That is some, one of the things that we need to understand. So we are dealing with functional groups. And the functional groups are which ones? Functional groups are the like of uh, the, 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 the bond, the ROH, the carboxyl group. Those are the functional groups that we, we are talking about. So now, so usually question three can be interchanged. We can have question two being organic, question three being inorganic. Admitted. It is important for you to be able to understand that. That question two can also be organic and question three can be inorganic. And I think usually question one is usually a mixed concept. It can combine titration and energy changes, titration and solubility, titration and rates. So that is very much important for you uh, to be able to understand. Functional group is the most active site, one boy. Functional group is the most active site. Like the most active site of alkenes is the double bond, the double carbon carbon bond. For alkenes, it is the the what? The triple carbon carbon bond. It's the one that breaks to allow a reaction to occur. Alkanes have no functional group, and that is why alkanes have very few reactions. In fact, the only reaction for alkanes is only combustion and the substitution. And that substitution requires UV light because they, they, they are very weak. They have no functional group. So the functional group is the most active site. I think I'm clear. Then we continue. I think that now people, now we already know, we are already with the first thing, the, the first thing that now the, the what is tested and how it is tested. We know. And now we do a chemistry. There is no chemistry for paper one and paper two mostly. The same question, you know, it's not like math though, maybe in history whereby you are going to find paper one as specific topics. The same topic that can be tested in paper one are also again repeated in paper two. And that's why I'm saying. If you are very weak in chemistry, you can focus on those topics that are going to be tested in both, in both paper two. Because if you're also revising for rate, radioactivity, energy, electrochem, you're also revising for, for paper one because they're also going to be tested in paper one. The only that in paper one, that question will only carry about three marks. But in paper two, it will carry about 12 marks. I've already said that. That, uh, that is just, a, just a mercy. I said question two and three for paper three can be the change. And I have captured it very well in my screen. And I want to believe you are saying that. Are you saying that? Good. Now we have the deliminators. Deliminators are the D and the E eliminator topics. These are the strongholds of chemistry. We call them the D, D eliminators. D and E eliminator. So if you focus on this topic, you are not likely going to get uh, Daudi Alieto, Sadaka, D minus, Daudi Alieto, Shimama Kedeta, D plane, Daudi Msalaba, D plus, you know, and you are not, you cannot get an E. So you, you cannot get an E. So when you talk about periodic table, we can revise periodicity visually about atomic structure, chemical families, structure at boarding, uh, a trade that cross, you know, already you have around 20 marks. Then salt to PTA salt to, to make a good test, even qualitative analysis. Then we have industrial chemistry and gases. I've already done a, a question on gases in, in the YouTube. Please go and check it under the, the top notch online TV. It's very much important for you to be able to capture that. Physical chemistry, we have the rate, radioactivity, electrochem, energy. Again, those are areas uh, that are, of course, you're going to get up to even eight a max. Then you have organic that a max. So if you are weak, you can focus on a few topics that are very, very much important. Uh, I'll be coming to a few things here, and uh, 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 we, 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 I can be able to get. There's somebody like Wambu, Wamama Sharia, I'll be able to answer your questions in a little bit in a more magnetic manner about the same uh, on how to answer those kind of things. So do, make sure that you focus on that. Observations. From that analysis that I've done, what can we observe and what can we infer? You know, we, we are pragmatic, we are very practical. So the importance of that, what conclusions, what observations have we been able to observe there? That from four is kink. Because paper two is mostly for four work. 70% of, of, of paper two is for four work. And in fact, there's a two years that even paper two did not have peri periodicity which was contributing like paper two was almost uh, 89%. Only one question out of the six coming from 
uh, the form one, two, three. If you are weak, focus on paper two and three because the topics they can synchronize. And don't forget, this qualitative we do in paper three will also be tested in paper one. When an examiner tells you, describe how you can confirm presence of copper. A green rocky material is that way to contain copper, copper. So describe how you can confirm presence of copper. You still need the knowledge of qualitative analysis. Inferences, what are the conclusions from this? Focus on topics that are likely to give you more marks if you are weak. Avoid over-reliance on past papers. Question revision methodology is for the very sharp candidates. Kuna wale majama wa mesoma mbako wanafika wanauliza mwalimu. Mina, sioni kitu wa kusoma. I feel like I have chewed the content. Hmm? Have chewed the content. And I think now I know everything. So in that kind of analysis, that's why maybe you may focus more on questions or you may be, you look at the question, maybe one question, maybe you're getting 78, 79, I don't know. You may be able to get that. But content is everything. Um, and you know, it is time for mocks. I know some of you, your parents have, have brought things that are you having about 20 mocks. Are you, how are you going to even to revise 20 mocks or 38 mocks? The same time you have them. Rely, first of all, understand the content. Come on, chlorine, and also chlorine vigori. Dissect, chew that, in a guest, digest and assimilate that content so that it flows effortlessly in your bloodstream. So that you are now going to be having the, 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 the intellectual wherewithal to face the exam, to face the monster called the KCSE. You cannot replace notes, you cannot replace content. First of all, understand the content. Jennifer Lokur, that must be, I don't know where you can. Jennifer Lokur, where you can unmute yourself and maybe possibly ask a question. Okay, I am not, maybe you can write your question in the chat, so I'll be able to see what I can do. So master of content is here to quality. Mastery of content is key to quality grades and revise your notes. They are irreplaceable. Those are the issues. I'll come to the, the best way. Before you go to questions alone, you know the reason why I'm telling you first of all to read content is because I know you know people, everybody is asking, give me the exam that was done, the, the mock that was done by Alliance High School, was done by Kenya, was that was done by Kapsabe, that was done by Man, that was done by uh, Asube Girls, and all the schools that you know. You know, you may find the teachers there predicted one, they have tested one thing, like they have tested maybe copper, sodium, or aluminium. Then a student will say, if Kapsabe predicted aluminium, Alliance predicted aluminium, Alliance Girls predicted aluminium, uh, man predated aluminum, then that is what is going to be tested. That's wrong. But when you go sit down and revise all the metals from aluminum from to copper to this, when you go sit down, you revise carbon, the entire content, nitrogen, chlorine, sulfur. You already have 12 marks there. One question will be tested in paper two. That's already about 30 marks because the, content, the entire content is in your blood. But when you now go and focus on one question because you see, Two or three schools are predicted. This is the, 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 the method to be tested. You are going to under, go rusting in a whole cell. It is like you have been dissolved in an acid or in like Magadi, whereby the rusting, you're talking about the, 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 the academic rusting, because they're going to be blank in the exam. So uh, in that kind of a scenario, make sure that you focus on, first of all, understanding the note, then you, you use, I'm going to show you how to use the octopus technique of revision methodology. Good. Uh, I want just to give you a breakdown on how that's something that I'm a researcher. I'm a very uh, serious researcher. And uh, this summary of KCSE testing per class from 1995 to 2022. And you can be able to see for, for the last, for those are how many years are those? Those are like 17 years. So when you look at that, you find that uh, that, that is 27 years, not even, not, 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 uh, those are 27 years, not 17. 27 years, from one, we have only been able to get 390 marks from the topics and from one. From two, 750, from three, 1,300, and from four, 300, 
3,318 marks. Can you imagine? What, 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 are you, what are you getting from this point? That uh, again, form four is everything. So make sure that first of all, you, the, the form four content, if you, you, you know it. Then now we go to KCC focus. How are we going to do it? We're going to have the content mapping, the octopus technique. First of all, content-based revision. I'll tell you what is content-based. Content-based revision is, for example, like now I can tell you, let's look at a topic like water and hydrogen. Let's look at, I want to show you how to do it in, 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 in five minutes. Go, uh, or rather, group yourself into groups. Let me say like now I'm in class and I'm leading water and hydrogen. I'll start. Very simple. We start with the sources of water. Kuna natural sources of water, Mambuya River, the lake, water, water, geography, those kind of nonsense. The chemistry you're going to set in the case it will be the, based on the chemical sources of water. Have you ever seen any question in case they're asking you, stay to natural sources of water? It will never say it for purposes of chemistry, but it's there in the book. But is it necessary? No. So in that kind of chemical sources of water, in that case, uh, like for example, when you're looking at that, how am I going to look at that? Under chemical sources of water, water is simply obtained by burning an organic compound. KLB may appear candle, but not just candle. Somebody will bring biogas. We'll also bring methane. We'll also bring methanol. We'll also bring ethanol. We'll also bring those any organic compound that you know. Methanol, ethanol, paraffin, petrol, methane. Even we can have a scenario whereby we have a diagram for preparation of methane. Then it is directed using a, uh, it is, is directed uh, uh, to using a glass tube and burnt. Then we have a what? We're normally going to have the, the, the funnel, a glass funnel that now will direct it to either calcium hydroxide and then also in a YouTube containing in a freezing mixture. The YouTube containing a freezing mixture, the water produced by burning candle, biogas, methanol will condense. Then the calcium hydroxide will turn, will form a white person. That's exactly how that question can be tested. But don't confirm, we are, don't confirm we are there to only kendo. We can replace kendo with biogas. We can replace kendo with methanol. We can replace kendo with ethanol. We can replace it with paraffin. All those organic compounds, when you burn them, you get carbon dioxide and water. Once they are formed, the next thing that the examiner will want is to confirm them. So you pass the, 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 the products through a YouTube immersed in a freezing mixture, whereby you're going to get a white, uh, not a, a colorless liquid is found there. Then directed through a calcium hydroxide, whereby you'll be taught to state the observation, a white precipitate. But we can replace the calcium hydroxide with potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. In such scenario, you say no white precipitate is formed because you have to know what is going to be tested. That is how that question is tested. To normalize your story in Aisha, kwa YouTube, we can also put an hydrous calcium chloride. So that being the liquescent in the YouTube, there'll be formation of a colorless solution. So if you're told to state the observation, if the YouTube was, we had to put calcium chloride, then we are going to say a colorless solution is formed. But if there's nothing, you're going to say colorless liquid. We can also put an hydrous copper two sulfate, whereby you're going to say it changes from white to blue. Then from there, we go to the chemical properties of water. Water reacts with cold water, or rather, cold water reacts with metals in group one and group two, only sodium, potassium, and calcium. Water, the observation, the metal float on the surface of water, it melts into a silver ball, it darts on the surface of water, and the resulting solution will change a red litmus paper blue. They can also ask you to explain why does it float? Group one elements are denser than, are less dense than air. Why does it melt group one element, or rather the reaction is highly exothermic, so that's why it's going to float. Why does it die, dart on the surface due to propulsion by hydrogen gas produced? We go to calcium. Calcium will sink to the bottom of the beaker or bottom of the test tube and then float again because group two elements are denser than air. But when it sinks, the reaction starts and for, leads to formation of bubbles. Then the bubbles now will now propel, bring about buoyancy. 
that propelled the metal upwards. To me, Malizana, those are the, the metals that can react with what? That can react with, with cold water. Then you go with steam. Steam will react with magnesium, aluminum, and also zinc, magnesium iron. What are the observations? First of all, we start with what is the source of the steam? Steam is not just uh, pumped in combustion tube. The steam is generated by either eating wet sand, wet glass hole, eating water, or eating an hydrated salt. So don't conform yourself to, because the book has only given you wet sand. We can also bring an hydrated zinc. When it hydrated zinc sulfate, we give out water. And why do we need to, to heat the wet glass hole to eat the hydrated salt first, to drive out, to drive out the air in the apparel. That's the main reason, not to generate steam. The main reason there is to drive up the air in the apparatus. That's why we give that. Then from there, uh, we have finished. Talk about the observation. All metals are gray. Whether you are, you are reacting steam with zinc, uh, iron, or uh, magnesium. First of all, the gray solid changes to, for magnesium and zinc, changes to white. For iron, it changes from gray to black. Remember for zinc, it will change from gray, then it turn yellow because the oxide is yellow when hot, but finally it will change to white. So when you say the gray solid changes to white, we are focusing mostly on the initial and the final color, which is important. Then from there, we are done with the properties of water and steam. Then you go to concept of now preparation of hydrogen, whereby you can say, you need dilute acid and, and zinc metal. You can have dilute sulfuric, dilute ACL and zinc metal. Then the gas can be drained using concentrated sulfuric acid and collected by upward, upward delivery or downward displacement of air. In that kind of a scenario, we are prepared, but there are questions. Why is it that we cannot prepare hydrogen using uh, a dilute acid and potassium, sodium. The reaction will be very explosive. Why is it that we cannot use dilute nitric five acid? Nitric five acid is a strong oxidizing agent and will always oxidize uh, the hydrogen produced to water. Why that we cannot use dilute HCl or dilute sulfuric and, and lead metal? Because this will lead to formation of insoluble lead two chloride or lead two sulfate, which will coat the surface of the metal, preventing further reaction. Then now from there, we go to the chemical properties of hydrogen. There are only two. Hydrogen will reduce copper oxide and lead oxide and burning hydrogen to prom water. When you pass it over copper oxide, lead oxide, what do you see? The black solid changes to brown. The, 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 the yellow solid changes to gray for zinc oxide, for, for lead oxide. That, that, that's the point. And I think, and then you go to uses of hydrogen, using manufacture of margarine used in manufacture of hydrochloric acid, used in manufacture of what? Ammonia. But remember, somebody now can tell you to describe how oil can be converted to fat. Then you tell us now, bubble hydrogen through oil in presence of nickel or palladium catalyst and temperature maintained at 200 degrees Celsius. That is explaining the concept of hydrogenation. It is important for you to be able to understand. So look at that. How many minutes? How many minutes have I used to, uh, to, 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 to describe that thing? It is something that I've done, I think, in 10 minutes or maybe eight minutes, those kind of things. So make sure that you are able to get like that. And that's exactly the content that can be tested under water and hydrogen. You can go to the others. Let me show you. Content based revision. Look at that. That is chlorine and it's compact. This is, this is a topic. This is a topic that I can analyze in one page. How? Look at this. We have chlorine at this compound. Are you able to see my screen properly? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. Now look at this. Let's look at a, a, a topic like chlorine. 
This chlorine, how do you prepare chlorine? We use uh, acidified, not, okay. We are using potassium manganese seven. We are using manganese oxide. We are using lead oxide. All of them we are using hydrochloric acid. And normally for manganese oxide and uh, lead oxide, we heat. You see, that's a, for example, you should be able to know by the time this revision that I'm doing here, the octopus revision model, whereby using the octopus technique of summarizing our whole topic in one page is that uh, whatever you see as solid, if you are a normal student, you should know the solid will be placed in the flask while the liquid will be placed in the what? Will be placed in the distal funnel or dropping funnel. So that one, when I'm writing like that, I'm summarizing everything. You require heat, but for this one, you don't require heat. Why that we don't require heat? Let me use that as a pointer. Why that we don't require heat? Because this one is a very strong oxidizing engine and therefore does not require heat. Then we pass it over water. What does water do? Remove traces of HCl gas. We pass it over quantum sulfuric acid. We this, The purpose of this one is to dry the gas. The chemical test for chlorine, you insert a moist blue lit, moist blue lit paper, it changes from red, then white, or rather it is bleached. Don't say it is decaralyzed. You see now, in that kind of just one line, I have that is a very pranked information. It is giving you the summary of everything. Back at the method of collision, it is there. Everything captured there. Now, I'm giving you important points. The role of potassium manganese 7, manganese oxide, or lead oxide is to oxidize HCl to chlorine gas. The role of it is to decrease the rate of reaction and also prevent formation of insoluble lead 2 chloride because lead 2 chloride is soluble in hot water. So when it is heated, we cannot lead to formation of lead 2 chloride. Those are some of the quotes that are not captured in books. So it is important for you to be able to understand because I think some students have been asking themselves, how do we prepare chlorine gas using concentrated hydrochloric acid and lead oxide? Whereby one of the products is the insoluble lead two chloride heat. Lead two chloride is soluble in hot water. So that's one of the role of that thing that's, that works there. Then remember, NB, although chlorine is soluble in water, some another student also wonder why do we pass the gas through HCl? Why do we pass it through water? Why is it that chlorine? Because it's also soluble in water, does not dissolve in that water to form chlorine water. This because the, 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 the chlorine is soluble in water. The gases are passed through water. So that the HCl fume dissolve in the water. Because remember, HCl has a high affinity for water. So the HCl will dissolve fast, hydrogen chloride gas. So once it dissolves in the water, it becomes hydrochloric acid. And therefore, chlorine does not dissolve in hydrochloric acid. That is why it will still be collected. <coughs> we go to chemical properties. Very simple. The Tukama Mambo have physical properties. Have you seen cases they're asking you to, to give the five physical properties of chlorine gas? We ask you in terms of their preparation, like why justify the method of collection? Why are we collecting chlorine by downward delivery? It is denser than air. So we have water. Water, how does chlorine react with water? Because some chemical product and match. It gives you chlorine water, which is a mixture of HCl and, and chloric one acid. The, 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 this one changes chlorine, uh, changes blue to about red, then to white because it's acidic. Then the, the HCl is the one that brings about the, the bleaching action. And it's shown there. The HCl will change to become HCl aqueous uh, plus dye plus oxygen. So the dye plus oxygen, now it is bleached. For chlorine water to bleach, it must be fresh and must be exposed to sunlight. So somebody will even tell you, to say the observation meant when a blue or a red lead wrapper is inserted into a chlorine water, which has been exposed to sunlight for two hours. So it, is, it will already be converted. It will already be converted to the, the chlorine, uh, the, 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 the chloric one acid will already change to HCl and therefore that water cannot bleach. So it is important to know how questions can be, can be asked. Somebody will also ask you, state and explain the observation meant when you insert a dry blue litre of white gadget full of chlorine, then it will not change. Why? Because water is needed for the formation of hydrochloric acid and chloric one acid, which are responsible for the acidic and bleaching properties of chlorine. Very important. With the metals, 
Chloride react with the metal to form the corresponding metal chloride shown there. Copper chloride and magnesium chloride mainly the combustion tube, carbon metal to me combustion tube, and iron three chloride and aluminum chloride sublime, and ends are collected using a receiver. Excess chlorine is passed through a, a, a guard tube containing calcium oxide or passed through sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide to absorb it. You know, this one I'm also describing the, that diagram of preparation of aluminum chloride. We can also tell you to draw a diagram of preparation of magnesium chloride. You, but you just pass the dry chlorine over, over magnesium or heated magnesium in the combustion tube. And of course, you'll be able to get magnesium chloride, which will remain the combustion tube. It cannot be collected in a receiver because it is does not sublime. Well, then with non-metals like phosphorus, we have phosphorus chloride, ammonium chloride, silicon four chloride, uh, iodide chloride, and then we have uh, uh, sulfur chloride. Of course, you can be able to, to get that. So now, remember, ammonium chloride is collected using a receiver because sublimes, but uh, phosphorus, five chloride and silicon four chloride are collected in a boiling tube, immersed in a freezing mixture because they are liquid at room temperature. So it is important for you to be able to understand that. Chlorine react with sodium hydroxide. You can be able to see with the code dilute, you get sodium hydroxide plus chlorine, you get uh, sodium uh, chloride plus sodium chloride plus water. With the odd concentrated, you get uh, sodium chlorate plus sodium chloride plus water. So you can be able to see that, that that's a methodology of revising. And at a glance, if these are the kind of notes students you use to revise when you have the exam the following day. You can imagine somebody, you can imagine somebody coming in the exam, looking like carrying all these things and he has only have one hour. To the exam, I gonna file his daughters in Dunia. I gonna have the monks and he's now revising two hours to the exam. But if you have chemistry the following day with this kind of notes, are you able to revise and prepare all the topics? Are you able to do this student? Is it possible? Is it possible, students? Yes. 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 Okay, I think, okay, sorry, I was unmuted. Are we, are, are we back? Okay, now we go to the next. So student, I'll just give you the, 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 the owner's operator to screenshot, just screenshot, right? I think this directly, you can be able to see it from there, just screenshot, I think it's just showing you. With that screenshot and with that summary, is it very possible for you to, uh, to, to, to revise well, very well? Have you done a screenshot? We move. I'm just showing you. I was just showing you how to go about that. Look at that. We are still in chlorine compounds. We are now at the hydrogen chloride, how to prepare it the way I saw you. I showed you this one. How do you make a solution of the of the of, of the HTL and what the role of the the what? What the role of the inverted funnel to provide a large surface area for the dissolution of the gas? and also uh, to prevent sucking back. So it has two properties, the, the, the role of this, to prevent sucking back and to do what? Uh, to, to prevent sucking back and also to provide a large service for the dissolution of the gas. And of course, remember, sometimes we are, we are going to ask you a question outside the box. Like we can also ask you like, uh, uh, why is chlorine used as a weed killer? Remember chlorine is a, is a bleaching agent. So it, it bleaches. It destroyed the chlorophyll. And when they destroy the chlorophyll, now the plants are not able to make their own food. Therefore, they die. So have you taken a screenshot of this, students? That's summary of uh, how to summarize chlorine in these compounds? Yes. 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 Thank you for the morning. Yes. 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 
Okay. That's okay. Of course, we have done that. Um, and I think now you're able to get the, I'm not be able to go through the time factor. I, I cannot be able to go through all the, all the summaries like that. But I, I'm, I'm very sure that once you see this and when you have this one, it's very easy for you to use it for revision. Are we together? Are we together, my sons and daughters? Good. We proceed. We are still under Clorendis compound. I'm showing you this now. This is everything. It is just summarizing. It's only that this was just two pages. Uh, but if you are using the A3, you can summarize it in one page. So make sure that you can also be able to use it to, uh, can you use the same methodology to, to do the same for, for carbon, nitrogen? Are you able to do that? Students, are, are you? Yes. 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 No. <laughs> okay. Remain muted. L let me show you how to how to summarize metals now. I'll just take you through one. Like for example, let me show. Let me see. Like there is a mischief there. Ah, let's let's look at this. Like for example, this is a this this is a metals which I've also done it in a one page. But of course, I I've tried to nimezi cutan do so the for purpose presentation. Uh, I've I've tried to. Uh, break them into two, but they are realistically one, just one page. Uh, let's look at sodium. This is sodium now. One, sorry. This sodium. First of all, the, we are going to ask you, what are the O? The chief O is rock salt. The other O, we have the Chile salpetro, rather simply the salpetra. We have a... Uh, Trona, we have borax, those are but mostly the salpetra and the trona and rock salt are there because the examiner, will, but remember you need to have more than one because the examiner will not will ask you apart from rock salt, name and two other ores of, of what? Of, of sodium. Then you're going to say trona and of course uh, maybe the salpetra. Uh, the cathode is made up of steel and the the, 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 the anode is made up of carbon or titanium. Somebody will ask you, why is that the anode cannot be made up of steel? Because the iron, the iron in steel, the iron in steel will react with the chlorine. So that's the key word to talk about. The iron in steel will react with, make sure that you say the, iron, the steel contains iron, which will react with the chlorine gas. That's very much important for you to be able to understand. So in that kind of a scenario, we, we, the cathode can be made up of steel because the product of the cathode cannot, the product of the cathode, of course, is sodium. Sodium cannot react with, 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 uh, with iron. The electrolytes, and this is very important, students. Eh? This is something that you always mess with up. Whatever you are taught to name the electrolytes, you tell us it is molten sodium chloride. It is not molten sodium chloride. It is molten sodium chloride and molten calcium chloride. That is very key. It is molten uh, uh, sodium chloride and molten calcium chloride because that is the electrolyte. It's a mixture of the two. The down cell are the iron cell that is lined with uh, that that lined with the uh, uh, that is the iron shell that is lined with heat resistant bricks to maintain the high temperature so that the electrolyte remains molten rather does not solidify. Sodium chloride at the melting point of vitro one and calcium chloride is low, lower to lower the melting point. I make sure that you mention to lower the melting point of sodium chloride. Still work, still goes there from prevent the sodium and chlorine uh, uh, from the carbon and from recombining, of which they are going to react. It also prevents now the, 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 the reaction between, don't they it prevent the, 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 the sodium ion and the chloride ion? No, it is the sodium and the chlorine gas formed from now recombining. Now, during electrolysis, liquid calcium is also produced the carbon. Because remember, after some time, calcium will also be produced. So it cannot mix with liquid 
uh, with liquid sodium because uh, calcium is denser and also because calcium has a higher, a higher melting point. Therefore, when cooled, the calcium will crystallize out fast. So that you can also be told, how do you, how do you, what property makes it possible to separate sodium and, and, and calcium? In the carbon, they have, the, the, the calcium has a higher melting point and therefore when cooled, it crystallizes out fast. Um, so liquid sodium, sorry. Liquid sodium is left is less dense than electrolyte and can be separated from the electrolyte. Uh, we cannot use electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride because hydrogen, the hydrogen uh, ions will be discharged in presence of sodium at the carbon. So if now, remember the extraction of uh, the use of uh, molten sodium chloride and molten calcium chloride, we want to produce sodium. So when now we use uh, aqueous sodium chloride, instead of obtaining sodium, we'll obtain hydrogen gas. So the entire process will be very much irrelevant. Then kuna kitu ingine, that is very much important. That is test for cation. I have not captured it yet, but of course, add it in your note that you're going to get. Test for the cation. How do you confirm something containing the particular cation? You confirm by simply, for sodium, you simply dissolve in water. You can add water, then you filter to remove any dissolved, uh, uh, any insoluble impurity. Then to the filtrate, you can add, you can simply carry out the flame test. Uh, yellow flame confirms presence of sodium. For aluminum, for all the others, for aluminum, copper, all those ones that are not soluble. So what do you do? Crush the O. Just listen, student. The methodology for testing for cations are the same. First of all, the first step, crush the O. After crushing the O, add dilute nitric five acid. Yo ni jia kumaliza hii story. Kama ujui kitu, hivi ya puwa kwa doctor na ujui kitu itakuwa inakuja hivyo. Tukwa sababu, all nitrates are soluble. So when you add any uh, uh, nitric five acid to anything, will dissolve to get the corresponding nitrate. So crush the all, add dilute nitric five acid. Hapo uredu utakusha pata kakitu. Filter. Once you filter now, if it is something like so, uh, aluminium, you use three reagents. Just the way we do it. First of all, add sodium hydroxide. Of course, you are about to get white PPT, which is soluble in excess. The second portion, you divide it after the you filter, you divide to three portions for aluminium. First portion, add sodium hydroxide. The second portion, you add aqueous ammonia. And the third portion, you can add dilute HCl, sodium chloride or sodium sulfate. We don't need you to tell us the, inf the, the, the inference. We only require the reagent. Crush the O into a fine powder. Add dilutinic five acid. For aluminum, the first reagent, add sodium hydroxide. The other one, add aqueous ammonia. And that one, add sodium sulfate, period. You're done. For copper, add dilutinic five acid. Crush the O into a fine powder. Add dilutinic five acid. And then after adding dilutinic five acid to the filtrate for copper, you simply add what? Aqueous ammonia. Formation of a blue PPT, which dissolves in excess to form a deep blue solution, confirm presence of copper, just like that. For zinc, again, you only need aqueous ammonia. After you crush, you add dilutinic five acid, you filter to the filtrate, you just add one reagent, add aqueous ammonia. White PPT soluble in excess, confirm presence of zinc. There's only one cation. That from the white PPT soluble in excess aqueous ammonia. Akuna ingine is always zinc. For iron, it's also another one step. After you, uh, you crush add dilutinic five acid, the, the, the filtrate hard what? Add sodium hydroxide or aqueous ammonia. Formation of a green or formation of a green or a, a brown precipitate confirm presence of the metal. So students, uh, and also for for for, for what? For aluminum, also remember this step of purification. The purification is very much important, very important for you. Are we okay, student? I think with this kind of analysis, you are able to utilize it and they're going to be very useful for you. Yes. 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 I'll be able to record this one again, and of course, 
I'll post in the YouTube mostly each one by one by one. But I think there's something in your message. Let me give you this. I think some people had not taken a screenshot of this. Eh? Construction of uh, lead, copper, and, uh, and, and, and what? Zinc. But let me just tell you. Do you know that the purification and concentration of zinc, lead, and copper using the same thing? Any O that contains sulfur is concentrated through float flotation, whereby you add oil, you add water, and then you bubble air. Or oils with sulfur, that is uh, lead, zinc, and copper are simply, they contain, their oils contain sulfur, and therefore they are concentrated through float flotation. I remember they have the same pollution effect. There is production of sulfur oxide, which dissolves in rainwater, forming acid rain, which will destroy stoneworks, which will destroy metallic reefs. All, all these metals, including iron, lead, and zinc, again, we have use of carbon as a reducing agent. So one of the pollution effects, there is production of carbon fog that which causes global warming. Now, Lewana, you need to know how to summarize these things. All the metals, except the sodium, which is extracted from the sea, one of the pollution effects is that they lead to creation of gullies leading to environmental degradation. Those gullies, they, when did the rain, they become, they accumulate, water accumulates and they become breeding ground for mosquitoes. And that is something. Even if you're as poor or as what, you need to understand some of these things. So please, can you be able to make sure that you're able to get uh, some summaries? You, you can uh, extrapolate them better. Uh, this one is just a simple diagram for those people who have, uh, if you have ever used this book, this is the, 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 the octopus book is the, is the one with all these charts. If these charts are communicating, they are not just anything. They, they are giving you the old rocks like this sodium, rock salt, and salpetra. Uh, we have the wood, the chlorine gets out from the wood. It here, the electrolyte is, is, is fused, means molten sodium chloride, calcium chloride. The steel wire diaphragm, what the role of it? Iron, iron wall filled with fire bricks, what the role of it? The cathode anode reaction is written there and don't balance the electrons. With the end of Guandica, two up and two up, it doesn't, we don't require you to balance the electrons. And I think I'm very clear about that. Have you got it right, students? Are we together? Yes. 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 Uh, terms always you replace the term with changes. I I did not get enough time to correct that. So please, my professor Kumiandikwa terms to me changes terms and to me changes. Are we together, students? We are no longer accepting changes. The terms you talk about changes. There are certified potassium and seven changes from purple to colorless. The blue to purple changes to red. Are we together? Students, eh? So this summary of uh, extraction of uh, this summary of sulfur and these compounds done in one page. Eh? This summary of sulfur and this compound done in one page, and of course, they, uh, it it is very much important to uh, to be able to uh, to understand that. And I think now you can be able to to see that. I think it's okay and. Uh, you can see uh, how uh, things are here. So that's a summary of sulfur. You can be able to see, this very simple. Sulfur, uh, we have the frax process. We have the outermost pipe, whereby we have path to heated water. The role of it is to melt the, 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 the sulfur. The innermost pipe is hot compressed air used to fold uh, the molten sulfur out. It has to talk about hot compressed air. Don't just say compressed air. It must be hot and compressed. Middle pipe convey the mixture of molten sulfur and water to the surface. And uh, of course, 
uh, we will be able to separate the sulfur and water because sulfur is a low melting point and also it is insoluble in water or rather does not react with water. Then we have the allotropes of sulfur, we have the rhombic monoclinic, make sure that you know how to, to what, how to draw them. Then we go to chemical properties of sulfur, summarizing that very simple thing, look at it. It burns in oxygen with a blue flame forming sulfur oxide. It reacts with metal to form the corresponding metal sulfide. React with conch sulfuric acid to form sulfur oxide and water. The observation yellow solid dissolve the are bubbles of a gas. With concentrated hydric five acid, you get sulfuric acid, nitrogen oxide, and water. They are yellow solid dissolves bubbles of a brown fumes. Uses of sulfur is on Antica. Tendequa sulfur oxide preparation. We have two methodologies. We can use copper and conch sulfuric six acid. The candica liquid I mentioned in conch. The observation that it will be brown solid dissolved because of copper will dissolve and there will be bubbles of a gas and there will be a blue solution. There is heat in both scenarios. The role of heat here is to prevent the highly solid. Remember, there is production of water in the product. So you need to know that we need to heat to prevent the sulfur from dissolving. Yeah, that, that is very much important. Then it's passed through conch sulfuric acid, which is a drying agent collected by down on delivery. Or if you need a solution, you use an inverted funnel. That's it. Ugna mililikwambi ukiona solid ujue iko kwa conical flask. Ukiona liquid ujue iko kwa. Ukiona liquid ujue iko kwa. Kwa distal funnel or dropping funnel. Then you go to the sulfur oxide again, chemical properties with water to form sulfuric four acid, which will change blue to alpha, red and white. And then if it's a, you, the, this one plus dye, you are going to get sulfuric six acid plus dye minus oxygen, which is now bleached. Then reducing property of sulfur oxide with potassium manganese seven, which is purple, it changes to colorless. Why? Because manganese seven is reduced to manganese two. The dichromate, Six changes from orange to green. Why? Because the chromate six changes to chromium three, which is green. Then bromine water changes to colorless hydrobromic acid. Iron three, which is yellow, changes to green, iron two. Then we also have with sodium hydroxide. You get sodium sulfite plus water. If there is excess sulfur four, you get sodium hydrogen sulfite. Then oxidizing property, there are only two oxidizing properties. React with magnesium to form magnesium oxide and sulfur, and also react with hydrogen sulfide to form sulfur and oxygen. And remember, this question is very common because both hydrogen sulfide and sulfur oxide are, are what? Are, are reducing agents. But hydrogen sulfide is a stronger reducing agent. And that is it. Remember, this question is very common. What observation meant when you lower a burning magnesium into a gadget full of carbon-4, sulfur-4, nitrogen-4, nitrogen-1, nitrogen-2. The answer is always the same. The heat produced by a burning magnesium will decompose carbon-4 into what? Carbon and oxygen. Will decompose nitrogen-4 oxide into nitrogen and oxygen. Will decompose nitrogen-2 oxide into nitrogen and oxygen. Will decompose sulfur-4 oxide into sulfur and oxygen. And the oxygen that support the burning. So you, when you react burning magnesium with any gas, you get the magnesium oxide plus the element. If it's sulfur, you get yellow solid. If it is carbon, black solid. But if it's nitrogen, you get nitrogen gas, which is now collected over water. Hydrogen sulfide is one of the gases that are very unique. And many students do not remember how to prepare hydrogen sulfide. It is prepared using iron two sulfide. You can also use copper oxide, copper sulfide, and zinc sulfide plus HCl. You get the corresponding metal chloride plus hydrogen sulfide. The black solid for uh, this, these are black. Copper oxide, copper sulfide, iron two sulfide are black. So the black solid dissolves the bubbles and the gas is collected over warm water because very soluble in cold water. And the only other gas that behaves like this is nitrogen one oxide. Then the chemical properties. Look here, how to summarize these things. The chemical properties of hydrogen sulfide are the same. And this one of sulfur oxide. But in hydrogen sulfide, there is a, a yellow deposit of sulfur. When hydrogen sulfide reacts, there is formation of a yellow solid. So, like when now we, we bubble hydrogen sulfide through potassium manganese 7, the potassium manganese 7 will change from purple to colorless. But in addition to that, there will be formation of 
deposit of sulfur, which is a yellow solid. So when now you bubble hydrogen sulfide through potassium, acidified potassium manganese seven, there are two main observations. Yellow solid uh, is deposited and the purple potassium manganese seven changes to colorless. Then you go to Godak process, you go to the raw materials. Raw material, we have sulfur, oma, metal sulfur, air and water, period. Main reaction, you study the roster. Sulfur is burned the roster to form sulfur oxide. Purification chamber, it is to remove impurities. Then you go to the drying tower to dry the gases. Then you go to the compressor to compress the gases. Remember, this one will require uh, optimum conditions of two to three atmospheres. Then you go to the catalytic chamber, where one of the sulfur oxide react with oxygen to form sulfur six oxide. The temperatures are 450. And we have a what? We have a, a pressure of two to three atmospheres. Very important. Then the, we have vandanium five oxide catalyst. We can also use platinum, but platinum is more expensive and easily poisoned by catalysts, by impurities. Easily poisoned by impurities. Absorption chamber, we are going to have the sulfur six oxide uh, dissolving in a sulfuric acid to form oilium. Then the oilium is diluted to form sulfuric acid. Also add that we also have the, 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 the reaction, the scrubber, whereby we have the sulfur four oxide dissolving in, or rather react with calcium hydroxide to form calcium sulfide plus water. Somebody can even ask you to write the reaction, the scrubber, that the, or rather, uh, you, the examiner can even give you the answer that one of the method of removing impurities or rather reducing pollution in contact process is the use of scrubbing. Write the equation on, on the what? Uh, to show the reaction that occurs in the scrubber. Then you are right, calcium hydroxide plus sulfur form that is equal to calcium sulfide plus water. Which other method? How do we reduce pollution? Normally by recycling, we can recycle the gas. We can also now scrub by using react with calcium hydroxide or we can use the FGD, the flu gas desulfurization device, the FGD, the flu gas desulfurization device. Then you also, talk, you just talk about the, the, the now the, the, the what? The, 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 the uses of sulfuric acid, the uses of sulfur fog, they know. You know, when you talk about the use of sulfur fog, they are there, I don't teach those kind of, these are things that students should read. You need a teacher to come to your class and start dictating for you. Sulfur fog that is denser than hair. It is very soluble in water. You are not normal. Those are things that you need to read. They use it. But now sometimes we talk, we, we test the, the, the testing of the uses is on application methodology. Like, for example, somebody can tell you which use of sulfur fog that makes it used to be used in what? In fruit juices. And then you're going to say, remember, there's a what do, you, what do you think we can use? Why we are using maybe uh, uh, sulfur fog in fruit juices as a preservative? How do you use it in green sealers as a fumigant? So make sure that you are able to, uh, to correlate those kind of things. Students, are you finding the, the octopus revision uh, very important? Very much. Yes. 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 Can you pardon what you said earlier about Zini? Hey, that one. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> pardon, so please, what you said about uh, the sound. Uh, chlorine. Mm -hmm. Out. Yes, yes. It's us. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what you say, Dali, about the dichlorum sulfur. I didn't oh, get the name. The, 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 the flu gas desulfurization device. Eh? Developed as a manga. Uh, you are, yeah, listen, we are talking about we are removing sulfur. The way we say oxygenation, deoxygenated. So you, we are removing sulfur. So <laughs> desulfurization. You say you write D, then sulfurize. Can I ask you to repeat, please, no, the, 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 the method. Flu gas is F L U E gas. 
flugas, F L U E, then gas, and I know you know how to write gas. Then desulfurization is D E S U L P H U R I Z A T I N, desulfurization device. So, flue gas desulfurization method, that's it. FGD, in short. Are we okay now? But just know the main method is simply use of a scrubber and use of recycling. Those are the two main methods of reduce, reducing pollution. So, these are uh, gas, I don't want to talk about this on these summarizing gases. Have you watched this clip on, on summary of gases in the YouTube? No. no. Just go. Yes. No. I don't no. want to go. Just go to the YouTube. I don't this is no. summary of no. no. gases. There's 18 of them using just one method. And of course, it is the YouTube. Please just go and, and look at it. Just 13 minutes. To follow okay. something there. Uh, check the top notch online TV wherever you're going. To go. I'll be able to show you the kind of things I've already done it. The, it is there in the in the YouTube, please. Eh? So now another one is now this practical. Look at this. I've also done it in the YouTube. Anything that can be tested on under uh, organic will it is here, nothing else. One page. Whatever can be tested in the practical on organic qualitative, it is this one. And you better get it from me right from the Yopa Command Center. You know, I, I, we do, cannot deviate. This is exactly whatever can be tested is here. And I've already recorded in the YouTube, it's not, it's not less than, uh, it, 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 it's uh, not more than uh, 15 minutes. So you, so you'll be able to go through it. Students, you can be able to follow it up that. I think that's okay. We continue. I think you have taken a screenshot. It's still in the YouTube. This now summary. Octopus now revision method. Now this now. If you want to use the revision method using questions, now this how you do it. You pick one question. Like now, for example, everything that can be asked. This is for example, like what I was telling you. This one scenario whereby you are summarizing anything that can be asked. It cannot be outside here. The only thing that I want you to remember for organic is that organic qualitative analysis are independent of each other. You can burn a solid burn a yellow sort of flame, then you say double bond, triple bond present. The same solid dissolve in water, you add bromine water, and bromine water is not the color, then you're going to say double bond, triple bond, absent. And you are okay. Don't try to say, I said it's present, it must be uh, present again. No, it is not the same. So you just follow the YouTube. This now the questions whereby, like for example, you are picking like one, like this organic one. All the chemical reaction that can be asked about organic chemicals, they are here. Exam is there from the syllabus, not from somewhere else. So look at this now. This is now the entire organic. Of course, those ones have used the octopus. When you look at that, is the first question of the octopus. You can be able to go and look at it. It is there. That one question is summarizing everything. All the chemical reaction that can be tested. Make sure that you know the condition of oxidation, the condition for hydrogenation. I just want to remind you this one thing. This is very common. When the student, for example, you have this question, like for example here, look here. Like here we have a, a thin, and then reacting with this one to form this. Reaction nine, what do you call that kind of a reaction, student? Substitution. Substitution. Substitution reaction. What do you call it? Don't don't mute don't mute them, because I want them to answer. Substitution. Substitution. Substitution reaction. Reaction. Teacher, can you go back to the previous slide? Reaction. Relax. Using excess chlorine. Reaction eight. We are just using one mole of chlorine gas. Are we together? Yes. 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 I think so. Uh, Reaction number 
Okay. Addition is addition, chlorination. That's why I'm asking. First of all, let people answer, then I'm going to clarify that. Number 10. Oh, and plus, what is the main impurity in sulfur? In sulfur? Okay, in fresh process, the main impurity of sulfur. The fresh process is that, uh, you know, these, something being extracted from the soil. So most of the main impurity there, they are rocks, they are... Dust, mud. Yeah, those kind of... Rocks. Okay. Oh, thank you. Question number ten is what? Is something... uh, what's the main purpose of the trap? Chlorination. Addition. Chlorination. Chlorination. Addition. <laughs> that reaction is simply called addition. What channel am about the donation, chlorinations, do you what? There is no reaction code. There is no reaction called allogenation. Whether they call it a what, it is simply going to be called addition. Reaction of alkenes and alkynes with allergens and hydrogen halide is simply called adi. Students, monaskis, eh? Mutu ende anza kuandika pitu zake za siji, this is iodination, this is bromination, this is what? No, that reaction is simply called addition reaction. And let it be known like that. Uh, many students have been asking, what even is called a process? The only thing is now, and I explained this one, normally processes, examiner will use the word process, when they are talking about an industrial process, like hydrogenation is an industrial process. The only one you're going to say like this one process for is hydrogenation. We, that is the correct one because it's, a, it's an industrial process. But I've said, get it from me that reaction of alkenes and alkynes with either allergen or hydrogen, like HCl, hydrogen bromine is simply called addition, just like that. And those are the only things I think I needed to to clarify flat, I think we're going to get more of it from my book. Okay, now, uh, topical uh, topical mapping, of course, I think I'll be able to, I uh, um, just want to talk about that. I'll be able to talk about the topical mapping. Uh, topical mapping is whereby like what I've told you. Like for example, Kamani, Kamani, Kamani great, you need to do the topical mapping. I think this one I'll be able to do it later, not today because of uh, the time factor. I'll be able to, uh, I also need to relax a little bit because I've been here for almost uh, one hour, 40 minutes. So I'll be able to answer some few questions that are on the on the platform. We'll be able to get that. Uh, so whatever I'm saying is that, uh, okay, good. Just wait a minute, so I'll be able to, there are something that I want to, I want to do topical mapping for, I'll be able to do topical mapping for rate and for electrochemistry, but uh, not today. These are, you're going to get this kind of, this kind of question that I was telling you. Like you can be able to get this like one question on a, uh, on on uh, on what on a, something like oxygen uh, and combustion. You can be able to see one question. We're able to look at and be able to get all these questions are captured under the octopus. One question summarizing uh, everything about that. You also have uh, this one is summarizing the concept of uh, uh, reaction with metals with steam, and you can be able to to get those kind of things. Uh, Jay, I think you can create. Yeah, I was unmuted. Sorry, I was unmuted. So I want to, to do that. Uh, don't leave because there are some things that we need to get to that. So the other thing that I'm saying is that these are way of Using this question, it enables you this code, the topical mapping using the question technique. But you have first of all have to revise the topic, then you come and now start looking. The question that can be tested by the examiner is how steam react with magnesium, zinc, and iron. So the questions are the same. So when you revise that question like that, you're going to, it's going to be very easy for you when you use that octopus way of doing that kind of a revision. And you can be able to see this, like for example, for those who have used the octopus book. This one question, 
or periodic table that has eight marks. By the time you finish this question, no, no, all these questions that are there, by the time you finish, this is just one question. Carry all these marks, it is, makes your work a little bit easy. So can you make sure that if you, if, I know most of you, you have the guru, make sure that you're able to look at it. I'll be able to come and do the, 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 the what? The mapping for this other topic because we cannot be able to, to get this, but we have been able to see most of the area students have issues. We have uh, uh, the, the at comparing atomic radius across the period, so on and so on, analysis, more and calculation, as low condensation is also an issue. I'll be uploading something like that. Make sure that you get that kind of a book, the Octopus Guru, is the one that is summarizing uh, all those kind of things. And I have uploaded uh, most of those questions, I've uploaded them in the in the YouTube, make sure that you you look at the the, the top notch online TV uh, for for us to, for you to be able to follow more of that. Most of those analyses are there. You can also put it in the in the in the in the what in the comment section. We'll be able to answer any questions. Also, you can also follow my handle on Twitter. You can post a question from there. It is the uh, it is Macau the Dales. That is my Twitter handle. You can search me from there. I'm at Daniel Baluka, of course. Daniel uh, uh, Macau. Or other Macau that yes, or other Tadiel Baluka from Twitter, you can be able to get uh, ask a question from there. Then I'll be able to follow. Please, uh, for the concept of gases, the octopus technique, the concept of um, uh, the, the concept of um, the, the graph work, graph work. I'll be able. I've analyzed them in the. I'll not handle them here because I've already put them in the in the in the YouTube until, until we can just meet here simply to clarify any issues that are there. So you can post anything in the. In the chat, I think uh, the, the 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 session was very successful. Let me just try. Watch this. Sorry, did you do it? Sorry, just one. So if there's any question, you can be able to tell us. Yeah, so we can be able, if there's any question, I think we can be able to, to, to get that. There's a poll that is running. Just give us your, just give us your, there's a poll running. There's a, uh, telling us what was the feedback about the, the session that we have run. Thank you so much for attending the question. The, the floor is open. If somebody has a burning question, you can bring it up. You can also write your presentation in the, in the, in the comment session. Tell us what you have learned and what you want to us to get. If you want another session, we can be able to. Distinguish between itin and a time. Itin and a time, eh? That one is not yes. a question. Maybe, but of course, a number is in other place and, and itin is colorless. That is, that's a physical property. You can also try to use the burning. <clears throat> time will burn with a more flame than itin. That is now, for physical, you can use smell. It, but it's, Pardon? I'm saying, you can use the property. <laughs> when is the next session? No, we will be able to we'll be able to point it out. I think I can can I do it maybe possibly you want another session possibly tomorrow? I haven't yes, yes, yes. Yes. I have a question. And the product Q was collected. The answer please was then added between the and the time containing 20. No more solid color. And I'm not able to answer that question. I'm saying. Let me stop sharing. So I'm saying this, eh? that uh, to differentiate a thing and a thing, when you're given those kind of questions, first of all, you need to know 
if the examiner tells you a physical property, you can use a physical property. It's thine as a pleasant smell. But it then is odorless. It then is odorless, rather it has no smell, but it thine as a pleasant smell. You can also burn. It thine will burn with the most suitable flame because it has a triple carbon carbon bond compared to it thin. That's it. So um I'm saying if I'm not able to answer any question, of course, I, because of that, somebody with another burning issue, you can br bring it up. Thank you for the cost that have been uh, helping me, the likes of Anne Mugenya. Anne, you're here? Agnes. Excuse me, teacher. Excuse me, teacher. I'm listening to you. Um, I'm asking if it is possible you can get the notes in PDF. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the the the, the notes. I, I'm saying most of them have. have uh, which ones? All of them. Um, <laughs> the summary. Okay. Can you? Summary. For, I may not be able to share the entire book, but I'll be able to see what I can be able to share. The fact is now, for example, like when you are, I've given you uh, some of those things when you're getting a screenshot, even the best thing I, I even apply, like now if you're taking a screenshot of something like this, not. The best thing is for you to rewrite them. <laughs> also, most of those things like... Remember, I cannot share the entire book, but I can be able to share just a few things. But for make sure that you want not the the the, the available in all the, 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 the bookshop around. So you can also this. My office number is 07. Shut up. Mine is 07. Before we wind up the meeting. I done. Let me just give this line a drop. I need to type in the message box. <laughs> Jay, can you type that thing in the chat? Just check the chat. Thank you. That's a cool guy. One, five, four, zero, four. Then, I think. Mr. Panuka, just mute everybody. There's disorder now. Yes. Mr. 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 As I said, if you want uh, anything from me, you can write in the comment section. You can ask the question you, in Twitter. I'll be able to respond. I rarely use Facebook, so maybe Twitter and the and 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 and, and possibly the, the 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 YouTube channel. So I think I'll be able to stop at that point. Thank you so much for attending this session. Uh, see you soon. We'll be able to communicate if I'm. If I am, I am giving you any session, I'll be able to communicate through your teachers and to be able to get them. And thank you for those who have also uh, commended or rather uh, appreciated our work. Of course, we can be able to, we are running a poll about 259 students, uh, 257 found it very useful, about two uh, synthetic allotropes who cannot appreciate, they say they did not get anything. So we wish you all the best and may God bless you. And I also wish you the best in your KCSC. May you continue doing something important. And of course, I think uh, you have been able to uh, get something that is important. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, we are ending the session now. Mungu wa bariki and mkuwa na